If you look right here, you're going to come up, this right here, I'm tagging right there, it's the ascending aorta. If this is the ascending aorta, this is the aortic arch. If this is the aortic arch, you're going to call this the descending thoracic aorta. Now, the descending thoracic aorta is going to continue going down, but the unique thing is, it's going to give off some going to the esophagus, and it's going to give off some going in between the ribs called intercostal. So again, you got the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, the descending thoracic aorta, which gives off the intercostal, and it's going to give off others going this direction to the esophagus. Mr. Gilmore, I don't even see where the esophagus is. Fair enough. You're going to see me focus in on everything up here. Now, in order to find the esophagus, I got this cute thing called the trachea. I'm going to take the trachea and retract it. When I take the trachea and retract it, you see the, this collapsing tube that's right under it, or right behind it, retro, behind it, is going to be the esophagus. But Mr. Gilmore, explain that to us. You got these C-shaped cartilaginous rings that make up the trachea. You follow me? And right behind it, you got this tube that collapses. That's how it looks in retrospect. So the tube, the reason it collapses, there's no food there. So when the food is present there, I'll elicit these peristalsis or these involuntary contractions and involuntary control, Mr. Gilmore. I follow that. So that's why it's retro behind it. So we got that lock and load. And we're going to need that information in a second. So let's keep playing the game. The first structure that we're going to see that comes up off the arch of the aorta is this right here. This is called my brachiocephalic artery. So if that's my brachiocephalic artery, Mr. Gilmore, the one that goes towards the right, I want y'all to see this, man. Let's see, this cat is different. This is our B cat. How do you know it's a B cat? Because we talked about all this. If this is my brachiocephalic artery, the one that goes into the arm, right subclavian artery. So what is this one going right beside the throat, Mr. Gilmore? Right, right common carotid. That makes this the left right common carotid. Notice all three of them used to come around the same spot in A, in cat A. But you notice this one came below, came off below Mr. Gilmore, so did this B version of the cat. Now, in addition to that, Mr. Gilmore, if this is brachiocephalic artery, then this cute thing right here is left subclavian artery. And when Mr. Gilmore left subclavian artery had a vessel that came off and went to the anterior thoracic wall. That's going to be called the internal mammary, the internal mammary artery. Well, Mr. Gilmore, can you help us understand the three main structures that's going to come up? Certainly. The three main structures that's going to come off. And we're going to follow this to a T. The first one is going to be vertebral. The first one is going to be vertebral. The second one, I can't even get up underneath it. You, can, you probably can't even see it, huh? Second one, right here, his name is costal cervical. So you got vertebral, which is going towards the vertebrae. Vertebral, and then you got costal cervical. Let me see what the third one is. His name is thyrocervical. So you got vertebral, costal cervical, thyrocervical in that order. Now, Mr. Gilmore, what was the structure again that was broken off that went into the anterior thoracic wall? His name was internal mammary. Now, the main thing I want to remember is this structure had one name. Just like in, in Houston, it had one name before I crossed this intersection. The intersection is called the ribs. Well, if this was one, we're going to call this left subclavian artery. But as soon as I cross the ribs, my name is now axillary. Mr. Gilmore, I can't see it. Well, bear with me. This is now axillary. Once I pass the ribs, we're going to call him axillary. Well, I'm going to remain axillary until I give off this vessel that goes down. What's this vessel going down, Mr. Gilmore? That is, if everybody can see it, that is 
the subscapularis. Where is it going to? The subscapular what? Muscle. So that's the subscapular artery. After I give off the subscapular artery, I'm going to change my name again. What do you change your name to? Brachial. I'm changing my name to brachial because I am now in the arm. I'm changing my name to brachial because I am now in the arm. Well, once I do that, Mr. Gilmore, there's this bone I'm going to go through. There's a foramen in the bone. That opening in the bone is going to be called what? Supracondylar foramen. And when I do that, Mr. Gilmore, I'm going to come out on the opposite side. If I was to tag it right here, on the opposite side, this fella is called radial. So anytime I tag it before the split, it's going to be called radial. Mr. Gimmel, what happens if it splits? Alright. One goes toward the thumb, that's still going to be radial. The smaller one that goes toward the pinky finger is going to be ulnar. Mr. Gimmel, I think I got that. But let's do that one more time just to make sure I got it. Well, we said once we cross the ribs, I am no longer left to play with. My name now is Axelary. After I give off this vessel going down into the subscapularis, which is called the subscapular artery, then I become brachial because I'm now in the arm. If I was you all, I'd cut these arteries, I mean these veins and these nerves off. But my name is now what? Brachial. It's going to go through this hole in the bone called what? Supracondylar foramen. And on the other side, if I take it, his name is now what? Radial. His name is radial. But Mr. Gilmore, if he stays going toward the thumb on the media aspect, then what you gonna call him? Radial. radial. But what happens if he goes toward the pinky? Well, if he's smaller, uh -huh. I'm gonna call him ulnar. Well, Mr. Gilmore, I got that. But I need to follow you into the throat, because that's my problem. This throat is throwing me off. I got all that stuff you just said. That ain't nothing.